in a previous advanced power query video released on my channel i demonstrated how to reorder multiple excel workbooks resident in on-prems folder containing in constant order of columns using a custom function that we invoked against each of the files in the folder which gave us the reordered columns that was a fantastic solution that i have implemented for several organizations and that's part of my power query course outline what about if we have a single excel workbook with tables across multiple worksheets with each worksheet containing in constant order of columns and our goal is to reorder the columns in the same workbook how do we go about this problem let's find out in this video so if you're new to the channel please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to get notifications let's dive in in our sample data set for today's video we have this excel workbook named in constant columns of worksheet pq containing three worksheets at the bottom sales 2015 16 and 17. in the sales 2015 we have four numerical columns such as the sales profit quality and discount respectively now in the 2015 the sales is in column b profit is in column f the quantity and the discount are in columns N and O respectively. In the sales 2015, the discount is in column C, sales in column G, quantity and the profit in columns K and M respectively. And in the 2017 data, we have the quantity column in column A, and then we have the profit, discount, and the sales in columns F, I, and O respectively. This is a perfect example of inconsistent origin of columns. Now, let's want to actually analyze all the 2015 to 2017 together. Of course, we can't combine all of that. It's not going to work. We have to find a way to logically reorder the columns, not manually, before we can perform our calculation. And that's exactly what I want to consider in this video. I'm going to come to the sales 2015 worksheet. Now, all the 15, 16, and 17 are stored in Excel table by pressing Ctrl T. In the table design contextual ribbon tab, we have the sales 2015 name given as the name of the table. For the 2016, we have the sales 2016, and then for the 17, we have the sales 2017, which is super cool. Now, our next goal or task is to go ahead and load this data into the Power Query. So, I can come to the Data tab under the Get Transform Data Group. I can click on the From Table Range. Alternatively, I can right-click in a single cell and then choose Get Data from Table Range. That's going to automatically load the sales 2015 into the Power Query engine only, and then we can start our transformation. And that's it. We have the sales 2015. Brilliant. In the query settings, we have the property where we can rename, and then we have the applied steps. Automatically, we're going to have the source and the change type. In the source, I can see we have the Excel.current workbook and function containing a name that is the sales 2015 table and then for the content we have the row id sales order date and so on now the power query automatically apply the change type it automatically changed the data types anyway so when i come to the change type you can see we have data types such as one two three for row id um date table this icon for the calendar and then we have all these um, decimals and so on for the numerical columns now in our case we don't need this change type please go ahead and delete it's actually not required and make sure that is deleted brilliant so we're going to say in the formula where we have the excel.current workbook and then we have the name of the first data 2015 i can double click as soon as i double click on this white space i'm going to be able to access or preview the data in excel worksheet we, we have the 2015 to 17. now i can go on and Double click on this, it's going to automatically expand. That's one of the features of Power Query. Cool. Now, we want to go ahead and create a duplicate of this sales 2015. So, I'm going to right click and then I want to choose duplicate. So, I'm going to go ahead and rename this and I'm going to call this one All Sales Files and then press Enter to commit. Our goal is to access each of the tables in the 2015 to 2017 worksheet. So I'm going to come to the formula bar and get rid of this part of the code. Then delete, and then I'm going to go ahead and press enter. As soon as I press enter, I'm going to see we have the content, and then we have the name of the worksheet. So we have the Excel.current workbook function with no argument in between. Brilliant. Now, we can inspect by clicking on this white space. When I click on that, I'm going to move this up a little bit. This is actually the 2015 worksheet, and that corresponds. When I click on this to inspect, we have the 2016 and then 2017. Cool. And then we have this error. 
Of course, we can go on and get rid of this error. So I'm going to come here, right click, and choose text filters does not equal, and that's going to be filtered out automatically. Brilliant. So we have the 2015, 16, and 17. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this column. So the name column, remove the column. That's not needed. Now I'm going to come to the sales 2015 and let's go ahead and reorder our column first before we create our UDA function that we can invoke on top of this all sales files. So with the sales 2015 selected, I'm going to actually move this product of the profit column. I'm going to right click and choose move to the end. So I'm going to move to the end. And I'm going to scroll to the left and let me look for one of the numerical columns. So let me see. Okay, we want to take the sales, right click, and then move to the end. So basically, we have all the numerical columns, quantity, discount, profit, sales to the end of the columns. This is going to be the same pattern that the rest of the files in this office files, the 2015, 16, and 17 must follow. So after we've reordered columns, we can go on and create a duplicate of the sales 2015. I want to create a duplicate and then I'm going to right click rename. I'm going to call this one UDF function. So I want to create a user defined function. Press enter. You can give any name you like. So don't forget, I just created a duplicate of this system 15. When I scroll to the right, I can see I have the quantity, discount, profit, and the sales columns. Now I can go on and create my UDF function. So I'm going to right click and then choose advanced editor. In the advanced editor, I'm going to see we have two steps, the source and the reordered columns. Now, the source is actually coming from the Excel.com workbook, and then we have the sales 2015 table containing several columns. Now, the second step is the reordered columns using the table.reorder columns function. Now, the table.reorder function requires the table as the first argument, so we pass this source into the step automatically in a way. So, I want to go ahead and create my function, so after or before the let, just Create some space at the top, and then we to go ahead and open and close the brackets. So I'm going to call this on custom function. Now you can use any name you like; it doesn't matter. Now we need to find a way to pass this custom function into the first argument of the reorder columns. By the way, we don't need this source. Let's go ahead and select that source and then delete. It's absolutely not required. So to pass in this custom function, I'm going to use the go to operator. So equal greater than, and this is what's called the go to operator. So we're going to actually move this, push this into the source. I'm going to come to the source for the table that we order other columns, double click, and I can keep on typing the custom function. As soon as I, I type in custom, I'm going to see that for selection, press the tab key to select, and then we have no error whatsoever. So this is all we need to do for now, nothing else. So we can click on done. This is going to be converted automatically to a function that we can use later on. Now, I'm going to come to the all sales file. Now, don't forget we have each of the files that are yet to be reordered. For example, for instance, in the 2017, we have the quantity column coming first. In the 2016, we have things like the discount in column C and so on and so forth. Now, let's go ahead and create or invoke the UDF function we defined just right now. We're going to come to the add column tab and then under the general, click on the invoke custom function. And then we're going to see the invoke custom function dialog box and we're going to, of course, provide a name, but that's not required. So I'm going to come to the query function and I want to choose the UDF function we defined. Click on that. And then I want to select the column that I want to actually invoke it on top. So I want to invoke it on top of this content column. So this is going to be selected automatically anyway because we have a single column. So go ahead and click OK. And that's the magic. Bam. I'm going to come here and investigate. As soon as I click on this white space, I can see the columns have been reordered. I'm going to scroll to the right hand side. I can see the quantity, discount, profit, and the sales. For the 2015, when I click on the next one, it's going to be the 2016. Can you see 2016? I'm going to scroll to the right. And then we have the quantity, discount, profit, and the sales. And then for the last one, the 2017, I'm going to scroll to the right. And then we have the quantity, discount, profit, and the sales. This is absolutely fantastic. So we've been able to logically reorder all the columns. And then we can go on and combine all the files. So I'm going to click on this expandable icon. And I'm going to see the list of the columns, the row ID, order date, and so on, up to, I think, sales. So I'm going to uncheck use original column name as prefix. That's not required. And then click OK. And this is the final solution. Amazing. So I can get rid of this content, right click, and then remove the column. Now, now in this case, we have the no data types. So I'm going to 
with the row ID selected, scroll to the right hand side and then hold down the shift key and you click on the cells. This is going to automatically select all the columns. And I want to come to the transform tab and detect the data types. So just detect data type. And then we have data types. We have the text, we have the date, and then we have the decimal and so on, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I'm going to actually switch the cells to just single click. I want to choose the currency data type. I'm going to actually replace the current step anyway. That's fine. So we're going to create a group by um, operation on this right now. So before we do that, I'm going to scroll to the um, left hand side and for the order date, I want to create the year column. So with the order date column selected, come to the add column tab under the from date and time. Click on the date calendar. I want to choose the year and then the year. I'm just going to automatically create a new column for me, which is absolutely fantastic. I can click on that and I should be able to see when I load more, I'm going to see the 2015 to 17. Absolutely amazing. So that's fine. So we can go on and create our group by. So with the year column selected, I'm going to come to the transform tab and then under the table, click on the group by functionality and then we we'll to perform a base group by. So the year is selected automatically because of the selection. Let's call this one total sales. And then for the operation, I can use the tab key to move Alt down arrow key to see the drop down. Press S to select the sum tab tab Alt down arrow key, and I want to choose the sales S S S up to the sales. So we have the sales tab key tab. Press Enter. So we can actually do that without having to use the mouse. So you can use the tab to move around, and then Alt down to expand. Brilliant. So we have the year by total sales and I can go on and apply the currency formatting. So in this case, we have the total sales by the year and we are able to perform this calculation as a result of the, the ordering of the columns using the user defined function. So this is the solution we have the 2015. The total sales is 47532. For the 2016, 609205. For the 2017, 733215. So this is the final solution. So in this video, we've seen how we can reorder in constant columns in the same Excel workbook using the UDF function. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.